This is part 24 of ASP.NET Web API tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss implementing the login page for ASP.NET Web API servers. Implementing the login page is very similar to implementing the user registration page. We discussed implementing user registration page in part 21 of this video series. We want our login page to look as shown right here. We already have user registration page, so let's flip to Visual Studio and copy the code that we have in our register.html page and now let's add a new HTML page to our employee service project and let's name this page login.html and let's copy the code in this page and then we'll change the bits that are required. We want our login page to look like this so first of all the text here should be existing user login so within the th element right here. Let's change the text to existing user login and we also want this register button. So let's include an anchor element here and let's include btn btn success classes and we want the button to be on the right hand side. So let's also use pull right class and we want the text on the button to say register and when we click the button we want to go to register.html page so let's set the href attribute to register.html and we want a username and password text boxes so let's change the text right here to username and let's change the ID of the text box to txt username and the placeholder will say username and we already have a text box for password so this does not change and we don't need confirm password text box so I'm going to get rid of this TR altogether and then we want a login button. So the ID of the button here is going to be btn login and the value on the button is going to be login. And we don't need this success model div so I'm going to get rid of it altogether. We need this div element which is going to display any validation errors. For example, if we supply invalid username and password, we want that to be displayed, you know, the error message to be displayed like this. So to display this error message, we are going to make use of this div and this is not going to change in any way. And for now, let's comment all the jQuery code that we have. and let's save our changes and let's navigate to our login.html page. This is how our login page is at the moment. When we click login button nothing is going to happen because we haven't wired up the click event handler yet. So let's flip to Visual Studio, uncomment this jQuery code and then change the bits that are required. This piece of code right here is not going to change in any way. We need this code to dismiss this alert dev when we click this little cross. And then we want to wire up the click event handler with our login button. The ID of our login button is btn login. So let's use this ID and then wire up the click event handler. So when we click the login button, what is supposed to happen? We want to retrieve username and password from the respective text boxes and then we want to post that to slash token URL which is going to validate the username and password and then issue us an access token. We discussed all this in detail in our previous video. If you haven't watched that video I would strongly encourage you to do so before proceeding with this video. So the URL to which we want to post the data is slash token and we want to issue a POST request and we also have to tell the type of data that we'll be sending to the server and to tell that we are going to use content type and we are going to send JSON data so the value for content type is going to be application for slash JSON and then the data itself so what data are we sending to the server we are sending username which is going to come from txt username text box 
and the password is going to come from txt password text box. In addition to username and password, we also have to send grant type. So grant underscore type is going to be password. So basically, we are telling that we are sending password and in return, we want an access token. Again, we discussed this in our previous video. So when the request completes successfully, this is the function that will be called. So to this success function, let's pass the response that we get back from the server. Now what we are going to get back from a server is going to be an object. Now what we want to do is convert this object to a string and then display it for the time being within this alert div. And here we have the code which displays a string in an alert div. So let's copy that and paste it right here. And we don't need this line of code, so let's get rid of that. So we have the response object here. We want to convert that to a string. And to convert an object to a string, I'm going to use json.stringify method. And then to that, let's pass the response object. So it will be converted to a string. And then this text function is going to display that within the alert div. And then if there is any problem executing the request, this error function will be called, which will display the errors within the alert div. So let's save all these changes, reload, and log in with the user that we have already registered. So when we click the login button, notice we are getting an access token back when it is issued, when it is going to expire, and the username that we have used to log in. So now, instead of displaying the access token in this alert div, let's store it in browser session storage. Browser session storage data is lost when we close the browser window, or we can also explicitly remove an item from the browser session storage using the remove item method. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So instead of displaying it in the alert div, let's use the session storage object and then call the set item method. Let's use a meaningful key here to store our access token. Let's call it access token. And where are we going to get the access token from? We are going to get it from the response object. And if you look at the name of the property, it is access underscore token. So let's use that property. So what we are doing here, we are storing the access token in browser session storage. And then what do we want to do? We want to redirect the user to data.html page. At the moment, we don't have data.html. So let's right click on the project, add a new HTML page, and let's name it data.html. And we want to redirect the user to that page. And to do that, let's use window.location dot href attribute and then we are going to point that to data.html so this data.html page is going to call the employees controller retrieve employees data and display that we'll discuss implementing data.html page in our next video so let's save our changes reload and login again So when we click the login button, notice we are automatically redirected to data.html. At the moment, we don't have anything on data.html. That's why it is blank. Now, we also want to do one more thing. Now, when we are on the login page, we have a register button here. If we are not registered yet, we can click on that button and then go directly to the registration page. Similarly, if we go to the register page, Notice on the register page, we don't have the login button here. If I have already registered, then I want to go straight to the login page. So let's include a login button here, which takes us to the login page. So what I'm going to do is copy the register button HTML from login page, and then paste it right here. And then let's change the text on the button to login. And when we click that button, we want to go to login.html. Let's save our changes, reload our web page. So on the registration page, now we have a login button. When I click on that, it takes us to the login page. When we click on the register page on this button, it's going to take us to the registration page. So session storage data is lost when the browser window is closed. 
to store an item in the browser session storage use set item method here is an example we have just seen how to do this to retrieve an item from the browser session storage use get item method so here we are using get item method and to that we are passing the key that we have used to store the item in the session storage and to remove an item from the session storage use remove item method we'll discuss using these two methods get item and remove item in our next video when we discuss implementing data.html page Thank you for listening and have a great day.